today I'm gonna bring up uh, something I've been watching. I've been gleaning a lot from the uh, the podcasts where they interview people that have great success in various fields. And uh, this one guy, he's on here. He's talking about how he was the guy with skinny legs, but he just kept working out. And then he, you know, did the heaviest squat ever or whatever. He excelled. But he's talking about how being dedicated, if you're willing to sacrifice everything, then you can make it further than the next guy. But if you're not willing to make those sacrifices, then somebody else that is willing might outdo you. And the skinny leg guy says... Well, I see a lot of people try and then quit, but I'm over here like a turtle. I just keep going, you know? And that, that's what it, I thought about this thing. So, like, your diet, your career, your schooling, your uh, business, whatever, it's like it's like a rule of 15. Like, if I'm going to commit to something, I want to commit for 15 years to victory, right? So, from where I'm at, Plan out 15 years of X, Y, Z, whatever it is. Like, uh, don't go on a diet for six weeks or whatever. You know what I mean? I have a diet plan for two years. Like, decide that you're going to do something for two years. And, you know, be flexible. But uh, setting up your plan. You know, don't don't keep planning all the time. But set, set, set your goal way down yonder, you're successful as soon as you decide to do it, right? And then if you give yourself a goal time of, you know, I'm going to drive this truck for 15 years, or I'm going to pay off this house, this 15-year mortgage, you know, when I started out, we got the 15-year mortgage, and I was in a hurry to do it, and the title company... I thought it was secure, right? And then when it come time, I'm like, okay, you know, uh, are we ready to sign this? They're like, oh, are you ready to start? So I ended up with a 2.5 instead of a 1.9 interest rate because it was when the rates started going up, which uh, looking back now, I'm still incredibly blessed. However, uh, I wasn't tied up all my loose ends myself. So, that was a learning curve that I've had to learn so many times. It's actually difficult for me to depend on other people. Uh, and I've also learned with that, I learned more so as employee versus employer to check that it got done after it was supposed to be done. That's enormous. Make sure that's in your plan. Like, you got your plan, you're going to execute. Well, if it's you doing everything, you don't really have to go back and say, did that get done? Because you remember doing it. So when you're getting these other people to do it, then you got to go back and check or whatever. And then uh, that gets me into this. I, I operate a month ahead of schedule. Like, I expect I'm getting paid a month late, and I expect to pay out a month early. And somewhere in there, in my head, that gives me a month of grace to make sure everything was executed upon. So if the, uh, you know, like, you know, the mortgage is due on like the 15th, but I'm auto paying on the 1st, and the money's got to be in the bank on the 1st uh, of, of November, well, December, because we're in November, right? So the money for the mortgage has been in there for a month by the time it actually comes out. But in my head, my running tally, I'm working right now to pay the mortgage for December, you know, right there at the, well, the 1st of January. This, this trip right here is paying my mortgage in January, right? So, that gives me uh, wiggle room and stuff. And then, 
having the availability of credit, build up your credit and all that stuff. You know, Dave Ramsey hates a credit card, but, you know, I don't have Dave Ramsey money. So I like the cushion factor and just like my YouTube subscription overlapping on one and then I got extra memory on Google and that laps every month and then when I bought a motorcycle uh, I keep that availability like I go buy a pair of gloves once every two years you know let it sit for a month and pay it off you know but you gotta you gotta keep that account flipping or it falls off and it looks like a closed deal on your credit right so uh, but with those three, uh, I mean, that puts me at $45,000 of available credit. So that looks good on the papers. And uh, I think it's forty or 50000 where you break this threshold at the bank. So, like, I'll, I'll run into people all the time where they'll use, like, uh, sale to go from uh, one account to another. And... You know, I've sold people fifteen hundred dollars. You know, and uh, and I've received you know two thousand. I think it's the most I ever got received on the sale, right? And I'll talk to some of these people, and they'll be like, you know, I tried to send five hundred, but I had to I had to do two fifty today and two fifty the next day, and I'm just like, what the hell, you know? And then uh, and then I realize, okay, well. I'm being treated differently by these institutions, you know what I mean? And then it dawns on me that your zip code's a big deal, right? So, like, having the right zip code is enormous, you know? And then, uh, anyway, so I, I, the point of this video, I started making this video because I wanted to point out, uh, I, I just identified, so I wanted to make a video so I could implant it in my head, right? The 15, the rule of 15, the rule of 15, like I'm going to pay this mortgage for 15 years. Now when I started out, it's a 15 year mortgage, you know, and I'm going to rent the apartment out and collect there and then uh, have these puppies and collect there and then, uh, you know, dis, mow the grass, whatever, and pay 500 to stay and then, uh, uh, you know, my wife worked too. That way I don't have to give her money. So she can, you know, do whatever she's got to do. So I'm paying, you know, the mortgage. And then these other things are paying the maintenance and upkeep of the property. So it just kind of leveled out was the thought. Okay, which was, you know, going to free up enough for me to make two payments every month. You know what I mean? So, so this mortgage is dropping at a rate of... You know, 3,600 positive every month. This 15-year mortgage, you know, half 15 is seven and a half, but with an amortization schedule, uh, double payments makes it a five-year mortgage, right? So I'm looking at this 30-year and what it costs, because I'm like, looking at this 15-year, I'm like, this is $300 a month difference. But it's 15 more years of payments, you know? And I'm just like, you know? And then I look at this other deal, I'm like, okay, so so now I can cut this $63,000 of interest in half. So I'm like, okay, you know what I mean? And then I get into this deal, because I, I just bought cash before. Every, every other property I ever bought, or cars or whatever, I was a cash man. You know what I mean? Like, my credit, I didn't have no credit because I never, I, I just, I made payments to myself and then I'd go buy stuff, right? So, if I didn't have the money, I didn't need it. You know what I mean? If I can't afford it, I don't need it. If I can't buy three, I can't afford one. So, you know, you save up for that, you know, $30,000 truck and then you wind up going to buy one when you got about, you know, 10 or 11 is what you're driving quits and life happens and everything. Okay, so this mortgage deal, you know, I'll get this plan and blah, 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 and I'm gonna, you know, pay in, you know, $4,100 every month instead of 2050 every month or whatever, you know what I mean? So that's the plan. And then, you know, I got this uh, prorated, I do my own escrow, 
because that saves you like $350 every month, right? So I got my insurance, I got my insurance on my car, all this stuff's wrapped up and bundled, and then like my tags and all this other kind of stuff, and then my maintenance fund. Being a truck driver, I'm used to maintenancing a semi truck, and uh, being a you know home builder, remodel guy, roofer, I understand the houses have maintenance too. So I prorate that as well. Okay, so that works out. At the time, it was working out to about seven fifty a month, right? Well, then you know the inflation hits. You know what I mean? Then, then the wife, like you know, is depressed because her mom had died and you know couldn't even go to, to a real funeral and all this kind of stuff, which is you know enough to make a preacher cuss right there. Uh, so deal with the angry and all that. But then like 43 people died because she has like a huge family and they were all old. And a lot of them were going to die COVID or no COVID. But the mourning process and all that, you know, anyway, so she's getting back on the horse to, you know, actually be employed and stuff like that currently. Uh, selling the dogs kind of hasn't been working out very good setting up the companies and all this kind of stuff. The, the remodel for the apartment happened. They never got a dime. And still, nothing. Nobody's rented the apartment. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of in limbo. But it's really nice. It's dusty. But it's, it, it, it's really nice. Anyway, uh, yeah, my wife has excellent taste. One of the best decorators I've ever seen. I, I kept home. I was looking at the wall and I had seen where these, you know, big time guys like are walking through their place and like seeing what's on their walls and stuff like that. And, and then I and then I get home and I look at everything and there's like some 3D type stuff. You know, and I'm looking around the house and I'm just like, like this is to the nines decorated and with the Jesus theme, like Jesus and like Whole Food or whatever, you know. Anyway, all the open doors, like nature stuff. Anyway, super nice. I'm just like, and I know how she is. Like, I know everything come from an, an estate sale, like Sunday afternoon, where they're ready to just give stuff away. You know what I mean? So, so I'm, wait, I gave uh, painting uh, to some of the kid folk, and they actually, I know for a fact my wife gave $20 at an estate sale. And when they, they, it, it appraised at over 3000 And they, everything's like that. Like, my whole life's like that. You know what I mean? And that's the blessing and favor that comes from God, which comes from reading the Word and doing what it actually says to do. Anyway, so looking at this 15 that I was going to pay double the inflation hits, these two side businesses not working out. She's not working. <clears throat> so now, I'm putting the book for everything. And that 500 I was going to be getting from Dennis, uh, that's just kind of what they're living on type of deal. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, he's working in everything. You know, so he makes more than 500 a month. But I told, I, I told him, I was like, just give that to Tracy so she's got gas money or whatever like that. Hey, you know, just kind of we're scratching his back. He's scratching ours type of deal. You know what I mean? And uh, so, like, there's no rent being collected. Not, not from the apartment, not from Venice, nothing. There's no income. But he's buying tenant. You know what I mean? He lives there for free, mows the grass, and, you know, buys dinner. So, you know, it all, it all comes out in the wash. Anyway, I'm left holding the bag on this whole deal. You know what I'm saying? So I'm out here driving and stuff, and then I'm flipping the credit and stuff, and then, you know, the, the, the insurance comes due, you know what I mean? So I just pay this whole thing, and then, you know, I start paying off this deal over here. I put this, this maintenance account over here, and, uh, yeah, so it's all starting to come together. Uh, but I was set up to double everything, right? At one point, me and my wife's arguing, and she's like, well, nobody seen this coming. I was like, yeah, we did. I was like, we made video. It's like got 37 videos talking about the inflation's coming. Like, half of this credit card debt that I got run up was buying some, like, I remember uh, 
she went and bought deodorant and uh, recently and uh, I said well did you get I said I, she commented on how much it cost and they had the stupid case locked up or whatever I was like why didn't you just go out in the shop and get some she's like what do you mean I was like that arm and hammer you know no aluminum and all that natural whatever I was like there's 24 bars of that stuff in the shop she's like what do you mean there's 24 bars in the shop or whatever it was and uh well some of the some of the credit I, when I bought that stuff up like it was I found the spot it was on sale and uh it was like a big lots or something and it was it was like buy one get one free and they were all a dollar so I you know I bought like you know 130 deodorant sticks you know what I mean and you know at the time you know like she's looking at this bill she's like what do you mean you spent you know $150 on deodorant or whatever it was I bought deodorant and something else I bought something else down for not or something else there anyway like when she goes up there and this shit's $8 and you gotta wait 20 minutes for somebody to unlock it you know, I mean, she didn't realize there was like a whole, you know, flat of a whole box of deodorant in the shop. You know what I mean? Which, that brings me to another point. There's spending money, and then there's the feeling of spending money. So you go and you buy something, and you get a feeling from that, right? And then, like, I don't take nothing back. You know what I'm saying? If I buy it, it's mine. I'm not taking it back. I don't care what the deal is. I don't take stuff back. She'll buy two or three and then take one of them back or whatever. To me, that's a huge waste of time. I don't do that. Uh, but, you know, I don't decorate either. I mean, look at the way I dress. I mean, seriously. Anyway, uh, like I, I've had the same pair of clippers. Like, I just let my face here grow out and just cut it all off. You know what I mean? Those clippers, I paid $17 like 12 years ago. You know what I mean? So, like, I haven't, I haven't paid for a haircut for 12 years. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not buying deodorant. You know what I mean? So, anyway, getting back to my point, I feel like that deodorant out there is free because I already suffered the slings and arrows to pay for that deodorant, right? And when I bought it, it was a good deal at a good time and everything else like that, right? So, and then other stuff, like a can of green beans. You know what I mean? Uh, we're gonna make this dish to take to church. They were grabbing some cans and I found some of my can goods. And I was like, I don't know if we should use this. And I found something that actually went bad. I never seen a can go bad before. But these new cans, like from Walmart, they're not as good as the ones from Winco. The Winco cans last way longer. I don't know. I don't know. They must make them different or something. But anyway, uh, yeah, they had uh, one of them had, had popped open, and I was like, man, this ain't good. And uh, so we threw them away or whatever. And then I get to looking at the thing, and uh, well, hell, they were from 2015. I was like, okay. Well, these are nine-year-old cans. You know what I mean? I probably shouldn't eat this anyway, so we just threw them away. But I found a receipt, and, you know, I paid 30 cents a can. You know what I mean? So I wasted the money, but I do know how long a can of Green Beach Walmart will last. So, you know, whatever. Anyway... So if I set my mind that I'm going to drive this truck for 15 years, you know what I mean? That I got this idea, okay, I'm going to go to this company, this company, this company. I want to, you know, do this undercover boss type of deal, learn everything there is to know about truck driving, and then start my own business, right? Just, just like figure it all out, right? And then I'm going to start this business and uh, do everything legit and legal. Uh, to the nines and then uh, you know step out and do some uh, you know puppy dogs 
and then uh, you know make sure that's all legit and legal. Go through that process, make the mistakes when they're you know 200 instead of 2,000. You know what I mean? And uh, figure out you know all these things about corporate credit and how the banking and fundings and taxes and all this stuff, and, and know how to set it up. You know, uh, find the right professional to set up these various things and then figure out how to remotely operate it, right? Because that's that's where it's really at. So, do the thing with the dog and then do the rental thing, you know what I mean? And, and because I've already got two 911 addresses at my property, it doesn't take a whole lot to, to split the property, you know what I mean? And then, if I sell my shop to myself and my business, my uh, rental business buys my rental property, then I can lease to myself as a terminal and my, and my uh, farm in Oklahoma buy a truck and trailer uh, to do farm stuff through the Farm Bureau and that's the other thing too, like, does it make sense in Texas? Does it make sense in Oklahoma? Uh, the, the insurance and the tag and everything is a lot cheaper in Oklahoma, you know what I mean? But there's no income tax. So as long as my residence for my person is Texas and then my business is Oklahoma, there's benefits there, right? So, I mean, and all this stuff, it's just like, I, did, I don't know what I don't know. You know, that's one of my mottos is tell me what I don't know. And uh, that's like a, a life thing right there. Like, oh, that's always my question. Like, tell me what I don't know. And, and for one, I'm going to figure stuff out. And then for two, I the person that's telling me what I don't know, I may or may not know that. I can act dumb listen to that thinking that I know and find some nuance that I did not know but at the same time I'm getting a good assessment of what this person thinks I know so I mean the, the dynamic of tell me what I don't know is enormous anyway so over the course of 15 years of being an undercover boss and going from company to company well I figure out what truck I like I figure out what type of freight I like you know what I mean? I figure out what pays what. You know, it turns out, you know, if you want to be a lazy truck driver, uh, one of the best things you can do is, uh, you know, find the right freight. And then if you want to get super duper paid, it turns out you want to move houses. Moving furniture, I, the business, tell the customer what I charge. Moving freight, the shipper tells me what they're going to pay me to do the job. And they don't have trucks, so they go to a broker. So the broker says, yeah, I can do it for X amount. And they negotiate. Then the broker talks to the carrier, blah, 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 and they negotiate. Then the carrier has to pay for the back office, for the equipment, pay the taxes, pay the driver, try to collect from the broker, and all this other stuff. You know, so... The majority of logistics is sitting in the lap of the carrier and the guy that's actually doing the work, that would be the driver. And then the back office people, you know, per load, they're not doing that much, but one dispatcher might have to manage 40 trucks. So that's a whole lot. And that's a whole lot dependent right there. And that's one of the things I found is like, those dispatchers, dude, they're making 15 or $20. And the whole business is hanging on that. Dude, if I ever start a trucking company, the first thing I'm going to do is advertise for a dispatcher and pay them $35 an hour. You know what I mean? The dispatchers is worth as much as the driver, except they're managing 40 trucks. A hell at 15 trucks. This guy's going to be working half a day. Right now, if I put this dude on for, for uh, $35 an hour, 9 to 5 a day, you know what I mean? I'm like, uh, 
nine to five and learn how to do this from your house. Keep your phone in your pocket and be on call, you know, from six in the morning till six at night. You know what I mean? And then just hire a service to answer the phone at night. You know, it ain't that, you know, you can hire out your breakdowns and stuff like that anyway. Because uh, your driver needs to be able to call somebody. You know, uh, logistics is 24 7. There's no breaks. There's, you know, stuff happens at the worst time. And the last thing you want to do is be that one guy that's just run ragged. You know, anyways, it's 15 years. You know what I mean? But uh, you now just think about it, you know, from a kid's standpoint. Maybe you got kids and you say, hey, kids, you're going to be stuck going to school for 15 years. You know, you got kindergarten at 12, so that's 13. Then, you know, a bachelor's two years somewhere. A good trade school can be six weeks to two years, depending on what level you want to take it. You know what I mean? So, if you run all the way through high school and, uh, you know, from 16 to 18, you're out there working, uh, you know, get your kid out there mowing grass when he's about 12. You know what I mean? By the time he's ready to buy a car or whatever else like that, make sure he's, you know, slinging them burger patties because uh, fast food is a grand education. Hardest job I ever had in my life as far as the pace uh, was uh, where I, well, it, I learned a lot from fast food. I definitely worked harder later on at a faster pace, but the, uh, the entrepreneurship of, hey, can I rake your leaves, mow your grass, and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And then the, uh, the structure of, you know, cooking at Long John Silver's, and then later, you know, at Kentucky Fried Chicken, you know, learning every position in the whole restaurant, you know, because each time I got a raise, right? So, so that was excellent. But if I had it in my head, I was going to go to school for 15 years, and part of the schooling is all the job training. What I would have done different is, is I would have took, like, your business ethics class, like, how you're supposed to run a business. Like, I would have, I would have got one of those textbooks and did that on the side, and I would have, I would have studied on how to learn things faster, and, uh, whatever my mindset was, like, I call it a backup trade. You want your backup trade where you're working with your hands and you have a skill. And then you want your main trade on top of that. And while you're actively doing your backup trade, whether that's food service, construction, whatever, while you're doing that, your job at night is to, you know, you, you want some type of textbook that you're studying on. And then if, if you can work in a... Uh, trade school. Like, say say you're just cleaning up at a job site, and then you're doing a HVAC class. You know what I mean? And, and HVAC is excellent because it's a little bit of plumbing, it's a little bit of electrical, but there's some special nuance to it. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, you know, learn how to run a business or whatever, so you can, you know, have your own business and get licensed and all that knowing how to pull your permits and everything, which none of that stuff is hard, but it's intimidating when you just don't know. A lot of people are really good, uh, you know, swinging a hammer, and you, I mean, you pull out a pen and paper, and they just dummy up. And then these other people, I mean, they'll piss and whip you nine ways from Sunday, and they can't change a flat tire. You know what I mean? So part of it is learning your people, you know, and moving around a lot, I see the same people in different locations. They'll have a different name, they might be a different nationality, but it's a it's a it's a people type. And uh, you know, like every town's got that that place where you can buy used tires and they'll sell you wheels and stuff like that or whatever. Back in the day we used to uh, go to the salvage yard specifically for your spare tire. So your spare tire, uh, instead of buying a spare tire, 
just by the tire and wheel that came off the wrecked car. And they, they, they'd sell you the whole thing for five bucks. You know, so you just go over there, buy two tires, along with the trunk of the car. You know, you got your beater car. Now you got a way to go back and forth to work. You know, when you buy it, just have to sign the title over, make sure the tag's still good. Slap a sticker on the back that says you donated money to the Fraternal Order of Police. That's your insurance. You know, they, they, they just check your check your tail lights, make sure they're working. Hey, now you got a car until the tag runs out. The tag runs out, you know, flip the car to somebody else, buy another one that's got a good tag. And that's how you, you know, drive around without a driver's license. <laughs> anyway, so 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 systems. Anyway, so so the rule of 15. <laughs> I'm gonna, dedicate, ugh, I'm gonna dedicate my thought process, and I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot this out here about 15 years. Here's some here's some earmarks, some uh, navigational buoys to get to my goal. I realized my success is I decided I'm gonna drive this truck for 15 years. My success is I'm gonna buy this house. I'm gonna fulfill this 15 year mortgage without missing a payment. How am I going to do that? I'm going to stay above the head. How am I going to do that? I'm going to stay working. How am I going to do that? I'm just not going to quit no matter what. And that determination, that follow through. And a little bit here today, a little bit more tomorrow, and then, you know, this time next week, ask me next week. You know what I mean? But a general guideline is the door is shut and I am driving, making money, producing revenue, handing out bottles, you know what I mean? Making a few videos, making some content, trying to uh, better mankind and take over the earth for Jesus. You know what I mean? So now it's just like, you know, I wake up, okay, so I've been driving for four hours and 51 minutes and it is 5.02 a.m. So I, 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 I awoke to start my day uh, about 15 minutes before midnight. Like, I couldn't get fuel because you can't fuel up uh, a certain amount of times in one day. <laughs> I went to get fuel. Hey, the thing's going slow. I was like, Daddy, is the car messed up or whatever? Then it dawned on me. It, it ain't. I got fuel yesterday, uh, twice. So when I tried to do it again the third time in one day, it just poured real slow. Anyway, I was just eating death to make it down here. And we got a tank for death at the at the yard. So it's cheaper to fill it up there than on the road. So you got to guess, run it low to get there anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's a rule of 15, man. That's a rule of 15. That, that's, a, that's a great outline. You can pick it. Whatever you decide to do, you know, actually decide to do it. And, and write it down, write it down, write it down. I mean, I have I have a list of, I just asked my wife when we got married, like the, the first week of being married, and we wrote down some outlines, you know, I was like, if we were going to do something, you know, what's some potential businesses, What's some dreams and goals for like, you know, vacations, property, job, yada, yada, yada. There, there's some stuff. And we wrote that stuff down. And part of, that, not, not a lot of that has changed. We've been married uh, in May, it'll be nine years. So I'm eight years in on this deal. And those, those things we wrote down are still there. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, church is a big deal for me. You know what I mean? Like, sure, there's money and cars or whatever. Like, this truck I'm driving right now, literally, it's like, it's like I'm going to get maintaining a freaking Lamborghini. You know what I'm saying? Seriously. You know, $250,000, $500 oil changes, the whole nine yards. You know what I mean? And, uh, but it's an asset, not a liability. That's a giant difference. You know, an asset, 
uh, is something you own that brings you income. And a liability is something that you own that you spend money on. Okay, so like my house, my property, uh, it's kind of both because, you know, it's got potential. Uh, if I ever get the stupid apartment rented out, uh, which obviously ain't going to happen in the near future, uh, so that, that puts it as liability. However, I am storing wealth there because everybody around me is building billion dollar houses. Not pay a million dollars, and I definitely got offered eight hundred thousand and turned it down. So that is drastic improvement. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's going to get any cheaper. I know the the market is going to dip and all that kind of stuff, but that stuff's really. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, with people. People are dumb, and uh, they overvalue stuff. And then, if it's real valuable, then everybody wants it for some reason. You know what I mean? And, and for me right now, oh, it's a burden because if they say it's worth more money, I got to pay more taxes, right? But I'm hiding my wealth there. Part of my net worth is, you know, what do I own? Going up, uh, it was 617. I think it's 634. It's changed now. And, uh, you know, we got the fencing and all that kind of stuff, but you got to wait five years for the ag exemption. But it is homesteaded at least. But even then, it's still $6,000 in taxes. You know what I mean? So I got I'm basically paying 500 a month rent to the state of Texas, which is ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, it's like, I was, <laughs> I was talking to my wife the other day, I, I, I was like, yeah, Texas, blah, 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 some other BS bureaucracy thing. And I was like, this whole damn state's an HOA. Because <laughs> in Oklahoma, there just ain't no rules. Like, if you live out in the county in Oklahoma, unincorporated or anything else like that, there is no nothing. I mean, like, you can, you can cut some trees down, they tied together with rope, call it a house, and it's a house. So, like, like if you, if you bought my house uh, in Oklahoma, like, it would exceed all standards, right? Like, if, if you go buy a new build in Claremore, which is, you know, there's a college there, and it's, you know, a nicer place, or a, a Broken Arrow, which is a nice suburb, uh, suburb of Tulsa, and you go into those houses and work on them, and it's not the same. It's not the same quality. They don't have, you know, stuff like an island with electric in it, that, you know, a trash compactor in the cabinet, you know. They don't have stuff like that there. They do have dishwashers and stuff like that. And then they'll have like a... Anyway, it's just different. It's, it's not the same. Not the same quality, not the same level. And uh, I used to wonder that, man, when I went to Florida, I was like, why in the hell is this three bedroom house freaking two million dollars? Yeah. In Deerfield Beach. And then I go work on it or whatever like that. You know, and I would tear out the bathroom and remodel the bathroom and just drag my feet, take it forever. Buy the fancy stuff, put it in there, whatever. And I may mean, charge these people, you know, hundred thousand dollars. And uh, yeah, I was working with the uh, McBride Resources, and uh, can I have some of the road there, man? I don't think you got to drive in my lane, man. You can stay in your lane. That's fine. Anyway, with a horse trailer, guys, you got work. Got more money than he's got braids. Anyway, then like I'd go to Oklahoma and I would, I would see like see like a hundred acres with a barn and a house and everything. Then you go in the house and like you just feel like everything's all bunched up. And the toilet's real short for some reason. You know, you go in there and poke your knees up around your ears. You go down to Florida, you 
sit on the toilet, your legs will sway because it's so tall. It's like, why, why do rich people have a toilet that's big enough to go swimming in? It don't make no sense. I mean, that bowl, I'll be this big around. I mean, it, it don't make no sense. Like, you know, in Oklahoma, I used to hear a joke about lift the lid and all that kind of stuff. Well, everybody lifted the lid. And then you'd always hear on TV, they'd make jokes about the girls and say, oh, well, I fell in, or whatever, like that. Like, what the hell? You know, it's like, it's like, dang, how little are these people? And then you go to uh, Florida down there, and you see these handicapped toilets, and I mean, that's something just, I mean, it's big as a barrel. And I was like, oh, that's what the deal is. They have giant toilets. And uh, same thing in Texas. And, uh, and a lot of them's fat, so I guess it's... In half a mile, good. keep well, left to stay on I-35 South. Work, you know what I mean? So, like, I mean, there's a few biggins or whatever like that. And then the old old style uh, shooter was, uh, they were just lower to the ground back in the day. You know what I mean? Now they're taller, so they're easier to get up off of. I keep guess. left to stay on I-35 South. Oh, yes. Sorry for talking shit. Uh, but if... If you're used to pooping on one of them tall toilets, continue on I-35 South for three miles. Just find you a real old gas station to use the bathroom. They sit on one of them short toilets. Man, you'll poop so much better. It ain't even funny. Like, it, it might be hard to get up off the son of a bitch, but uh, it, it makes dropping the dukes a lot easier. Like, you, you just do your business and go on. It's uh, something about the position. You know what I mean? Anyway. Well, I'm going to get off here. That's the rule of 15. I don't know why I'm making this so long. Uh, yeah, I'm going to title this one the rule of 15. All right, Rock Hill, read your Bible and praise Jesus every day. Get out there and witness to somebody, man. And make these videos for yourself. Like, you don't have to post it, dude. Make a video. Like, try to tell somebody else. Try to instruct someone on any topic that crosses your mind. And then watch yourself. Listen to what you say. And, and be like, hey, does that make sense? Do I sound like an idiot? You know what I mean? Does this actually make sense? You know what I mean? And then like, talk about your plans. Like, hey, you know, I'm going to, you know, do whatever for 15 years. And talk about that. What would you like? This, that. Maybe do a podcast with your wife. Like, what do you want to do for the next 15 years? And, I mean, you don't even have to shine the camera on yourself. You can just lay your phone on the table. Let it, look at the ceiling fan. And just talk. You know what I mean? And then watch it. Because it's, it's ridiculously good. I, I, I modify what I'm doing. Based off of uh, how much I thought about it. And there's writing it down and stuff. And then there's conversing with my wife and stuff. And then there's trying to teach somebody something. You know what I mean? So I've, I've grown as a man through making these YouTube videos a lot. And, uh, of course, keep the focus on Jesus all the time. So you, you In know, half a mile, if, keep left to stay on I-35 South. Good. In the Bible, I want to show that as much as possible. And as I share it, I remember it. And then I add it, add it, add it. So I'm just programming my head with all these different things. And uh, this is a reinforcement. You know, Keep left I, to stay on I-35 they, they, South. They taught me, uh, I donh, went to college. They taught me uh, that if you read... Continue on I-35 South for six miles. They just keep telling me where to go. I haven't changed the road for... I've been on Highway 35 for six hours. <laughs> It's still trying to tell me which way to go. Anyway, uh, if you hear your, if you hear somebody read it while you're reading it, that's real good for retention. But if you read a book out loud to yourself, like read it out loud, just you in the room, and it, you retain more of that. And then uh, watch the video. Like if I, when I read the Bible and it's on video. And then I watch the video. Man, the retention of that. And then the nuance. 
then old Gator would be like, okay, here's this thing, and this is me reading it, and then here's some commentary I gave, but I can see these three other things right now. And so it's like, here's the book, wow, and then there's like, okay, I'm, I'm recognizing wow here, wow there, wow there, and then now I'm watching the video, I said, oh, is it this, is it that? And I'm thinking about other parts of the book. So I'm cross-referencing, and I'm deep diving into this study, you know what I mean? And just doing like this, uh, you know, like uh, like the doctors and stuff, and the nutritionists and everything. They, they have all these studies and publishers, uh, published, you know, papers and stuff about, you know, uh, you know human growth hormone or, uh, you know, MCT oil or, you know, uh, all these various things. And they'll look at this, look at that, you know, next thing you know, they're eating algae, you know, uh, <laughs> so, you know, if you do that type of study, like, learn how a actual researcher is researching stuff, like, figure that out, like, get an idea in your head, this is how people study these various things, now, take that information back to the Bible, realize that each book is a different book about the same thing that's co-authored and inspired by the Holy Ghost. Now you can take this over here and add with this, add with that. Now you got three witnesses bringing about a certain level of truth. It's 11 different translations of the Bible and wow, I mean, it's just, wow. Hey, don't do that uh, like Bible Hub. And those, uh, there's about five uh, different Bible, you know, www, Bible, whatever. And they'll have all these different versions, but it's really the same one. It's really the same one over and over. It's, it, they're, they're not the, if you got the real book, like uh, go to your used bookstore and get you a uh, Amplified Bible, uh, get you a, a King James, New King James, uh, Strong's Concordance, ASC, uh, the scriptures, there's one that just says Holy Bible, uh, anyway, uh, you can go back and read, and you can go book by book by book in each translation, and then you can consult all the different translations, now you're interacting with the entire group of people that said, hey, we think the scripture means this, uh, you can even get an original Ethiopian Bible. You know, you can get a Catholic Bible, you can get the Apocrypha, you can get the Book of Jasher, you know what I mean? They, they really round out your uh, capabilities. Uh, you can look into this uh, other stuff, too, like this uh, Lewis Howe School of Greatness, you know what I mean? Which is very uh, podcast version of Think and Grow Rich, you know what I mean? I mean, there's the book. There's audio books and all this other stuff. And, you know, you should really consider, I mean, seriously, you really should consider a job that, it, that requires you to do something for an extended period of time that's boring. Where you can, you know, actually uh, do what you got to do and then actually educate yourself. You know what I mean? Get, you know, dirty hands is clean money and all that. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, just figure out what works for you. But, man, build this up here. Build your brain. And the, the pen is mightier than the sword. You know what I mean? It's really true. And, but a pen is just writing thoughts down. That's what that's doing. You know, I remember one time, I, I mean, I remember a thousand times ago in the jail, but one time, we had some jackasses staying, uh, at, uh, they were kid folk too, they piece of shit, they were staying over at the farm, and, uh, man, they were threatening Eddie and everything like that or whatever, and then, uh, I went over there, and they, they, they shot at me and everything like that or whatever, and they, I guess they thought I'd just leave, you know, maybe. In half a anyway, mile, uh, keep left to stay on I-35 I South, follow signs for Laredo. And, uh, came in there, and they were all sitting at the table, I got the drop on them. Right? And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm unarmed. I know they're armed. They don't realize that they shot at me or whatever like that. And uh, so 
so I step in there. You know, Keep left to stay on I-35 South. The police showed up. Blah, 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 this and that. Next day, went down and filled out some uh, restraining orders. Continue on I-35 South for two miles. The cops went out there and uh, removed them from the property. And I had some other stuff I was doing in town, you know, and I had to go back to work. And that morning, Ed called me. He said, "He said, hey, uh, won't you won't you give me a ride and uh, uh, have a cup of coffee?" And Ed don't drink coffee, so I knew something was fucked up. And uh, that 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 morning, that, that's when all that stuff went down. And uh, and he told me, he's like, "Yeah, this, that, and the other," you know. And uh, yeah, so uh, we went and took care of like four different things and did some some other stuff. And then I secured, uh, I think I bought a, I, I bought and sold a truck that day, too. Anyway, but I remember, I'm sitting there in the courtroom, or in the, in the courthouse, and I'm on the phone talking with this guy about this truck. I'm like, hey, I gotta go, whatever else like that. And I see the guy, uh, the, the uh, court clerk, walking out of the office or whatever. And I'm like... So, so, so are you going to go over or whatever? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, well, that gate's probably locked or whatever else like that. It's okay for you to cut the, cut the lock off of it. Don't worry about it. Uh, we got, you know, another one. Uh, and uh, uh, I might go out there and open it up and then lock it open where they can't shut it or whatever. And uh, they're like, yeah, no problem. And uh, so I was going to beat them out there or whatever else like that. And then I had to go see this dude about the trucks. Cause so like my mechanic showed In half a mile, up, keep right? left to stay on I-35 yeah, South. Right? Follow so, signs for Laredo. So I had to meet the mechanic. So just off of what was wrote down, those people were extracted. And you know, I see these things where there's like squatters and all that. Keep left stuff. to stay on I-35 like, South. Yeah. So I mean these people were living there. They got their mail there. The whole uh, yard. Continue on I-35 South for 149 yeah. miles. A little bit of paperwork. You know, it was easy peasy. I wasn't even there. Got it done. But I remember sitting there thinking to myself, I'm standing there that mechanic that was late, and I'm standing there looking at this truck, and I thought to myself, there's eight things going on. You know what I mean? And I was working for this company, too. So, <laughs> I had called him and said, hey, uh, I'm going to need one more day. You know what I mean? Because I'm just doing like a 34-hour break, you know, you know, whole situation he rubs. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, that, it, it, it all went down. I was standing there, I remember thinking to myself, it's a lot different when the cops got a piece of paper, you know what I mean, to go do something. And it, it was like, you know, I've told a lot of people what to do before, you know what I mean? But, but when you tell a group of people, you know what I mean, what to do, stateside, and they go enforce what you said, I mean, it has a different feeling to it. It really does. It, it really does. So I understand, like, now, like, I'll see these uh, situations where, like, these politicians and stuff are all corrupt and everything. It's like, I understand what that feeling of power is to that degree, in that way. And, uh, it was a lot different than any kind of, you know, uh, private business. We'll just say that. It was a lot different than gangster business. It was a lot different than, you know, uh, places that don't exist, things that didn't happen. It was all, all of that, all of that was different. Then watch that guy say, yeah, I'm going to go over here to the sheriff's office with his little piece of paper. He's like a bailiff, I guess. Anyway, yeah, it was something else. Uh, and then proceeded on and got the load. I, I, you know, rescheduled the delivery. And, uh, you know, went on down to Texas, made the delivery. But, yeah, uh, Principal 
said anything wise, but there's not an example in the Bible of that thing. And uh, Proverbs is uh, one of the wisdom books. Turns out there's 31. Most months have, you know, 28 to 31 days or whatever. So uh, that proverb of the day is a thing. And, uh, yeah. So you might add that to your repertoire. And uh, put another arrow in your quiver. Fight off the devil. That would be cool. But, yeah, man. Yeah. The, the Lord will get you back, man. He will. You know, if you're living right, you're doing things God's way, it's going to suck, man. It's going to be real hard. But after the fact, you'll look back and be like, oh, that was victory, that was victory, that was victory. Yeah, but while you're in it, you're just like, ah, you know, it's like roller coaster, ride. Right? But don't let that bother you. All right, Rock Hill. Go get him.